بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ مائی نیم از ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان نسگر اینڈ وی آر ڈسکسنگ دا سنتھسز اینڈ ڈیزائن آف ان آرگینک مٹیریل انڈر دا سبجیکٹ آف ایڈوانسڈ ان آرگینک مٹیریل کیمسٹری ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹ سو فار وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ دا ہائی ٹمپریچر سنتھسز پروسیس فار دا مینوفیکچرنگ آف desired in organic materials and uh, in last two lectures we were discussing about the low temperature methods in low temperature methods we have discussed some of the sol gel method using oxy hydroxides and uh, colloidal chemistry while uh, the synthesis of zeolites were also discussed with you people and uh, alumina based abrasives and films Uh, we have already discussed uh, use of homogeneous single source precursors as well now let's talk about the most renowned hydrothermal method or salvothermal synthesis hydrothermal synthesis actually involves heating reactants in water or steam at uh, high pressures and temperatures The water has two functions as a pressure transmitting medium and of course as a solvent in which the solubility of the reactants is pressure temperature dependent this solvent would have a quite special property uh, towards the reactant Uh, where it can act as a pressure temperature dependent solu- solvent this method is quite simple uh, in which reactants along with water are placed in ta- inside the teflon lined cylinder or we can said it's kind of bomb which is either sealed or connected to an external pressure control the bomb is actually uh, placed in an oven usually at a temperature range 100 degree celsius to 500 degree celsius pressure is controlled either externally or by the degree of filing in a sealed bomb by making use of pt phase diagrams in this figure a uh, the curve ab is actually is the uh, saturated steam curve and separates water above from the steam which is on below at temperature above 374 degree celsius point p water is the super critical condition and there is no distinction between liquid and vapor states hydrothermal methods have wide range of applications for example uh, zeolite synthesis that uh, we have discussed in our previous lectures the final stage is to heat uh, alumino silicate gels was actually hydrothermally treated to the crystals of zeolites single crystals of quartz which is sio2 which are used as piezoelectrics in range of applications are grown hydrothermally in a temperature gradient using arrangement shown in this figure b the solubility of silicon dioxide in sodium hydroxide solution actually increases with increase in temperature effectively therefore 
silicon dioxide dissolved at the hot end is actually transported to the cooler end by convection and crystallizes on suspended sheets in this reaction sodium hydroxide act as mineral mineralizer while silicon dioxide is only sparingly soluble in water but the solubility actually can be increases greatly when sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water and speed of the growth of quartz crystal by hydrothermal treatment many phases can be prepared hydrothermally at much lower temperatures that would be required for solid state reactions for example to produce the magneto plumbite phase it would require actually heating of the oxide components which is the barium carbonate uh, but at about 1200 degrees celsius but hydrothermally that reaction could be carried out at quite low temperature for example at about 300 degrees celsius so this would be the quite advantageous work of the hydrothermal treatment and uh, here we can see that this is actually the assembly of uh, autoclave that is used for the synthesis of many inorganic compounds by hydrothermal treatment if we use the word hydrothermal or solvothermal it means if uh, in this autoclave if the solvent is water then we can said this is hydrothermal and if the solvent is other than water for example we can use ethanol we can use tmf we can use sometimes the mixture of some renowned solvents to optimize the condition for the better growth of crystals as well as for the better crystalline materials then the reaction would called as solvothermal treatment this is actually uh, we can see that this is actually the uh, autoclave which is also known as bomb we can see this is actually the outer uh, structure of the autoclave which is made up of uh, stainless steel while it should be uh, empty and we should have to place an teflon lining inside this tube uh, because why we need to provide teflon inside this stainless steel autoclave because teflon is supposed to be the most resistance element for any kind of reactants the reactants may be of highly acidic in nature sometime highly basic in nature and sometime highly corrosive in nature so the teflon have very high resistivity and uh, it is quite inert with any kind of oxidants as well as reductants even at higher temperatures so when we place this uh, our reactant mixture in the teflon lined autoclave we better to seal that autoclave uh, thoroughly because we need to provide the stainless steel discs as well as the lid and we need to tight the main cap or the opener uh, with a sometimes steel rods which would be used to seal that autoclave in a quite better way so after tightening this autoclave we need to uh, put this autoclave in an heating oven 
the heating oven have quite enormous functions we can adjust the temperature of heating oven of over desired depends upon the reaction conditions and sometimes the product conditions for example we can adjust the temperature uh, in a wide range for example 50 degree celsius to and uh, up to 500 or 600 degree celsius heating oven have very specific temperatures and it can uh, sustain the temperature that we need to provide for example we need to put our autoclave at about 300 degree celsius for seven days so the autoclave uh, the heating oven have a ability to set the temperature at about 300 degree celsius for seven days or even up to 14 or 21 days with no harm moreover whenever we need to cool or whenever we need to stop the reaction the heating firm heating oven have an other uh, property which is actually the slow slow cooling of the reaction mixture we can even slow we can even cool the temperature from 300 certain temperature to room temperature for even four days or five days so this is quite helpful technique for the synthesis of inorganic materials and it would be able to uh, synthesize many crystalline compounds which are uh, supposed to be impossible to synthesize outside this conditions in a buyer process for the commercial extraction of aluminium oxide prior to the production of aluminium metal bauxite is actually dissolved hydrothermally in sodium hydroxide solution from which gypsite is actually precipitated and heated to produce anhydrous alumina oxide the process is actually summarized in this picture the solvothermal synthesis is quite similar to hydrothermal synthesis bus uses uh, supercritical solvents or the solvent mixture that is finding an increasing number of applications for example lithium manganese silicate of current interest as a lithium battery cathode material was synthesized as a phase pure at 300 degrees celsius and 38 milli power in five minute in supercritical water ethanol mixture this compound is particularly difficult to prepare by conventional solid state foods because high reaction temperatures are required and manganese 2 plus is very easily oxidized in addition manganese 2 plus is a rather large divalent cation and is not expected to occupy tetrahedral sites easily in lithium manganese silicate oxide crystal structures so let us talk about some of the uh, examples that are going to be happen in recent scientific fields to study to learn the importance of hydrothermal synthesis and uh, along the thermal analysis that would be quite helpful for the understanding of the structure and some of the renowned properties that uh, would be quite difficult to understand and to predict before 50 years ago so here is the first example it is actually a uh, international publications uh, and it is a research that is 
published in Journal of Material Chemistry C. It is the Royal Society of Chemistry. The topic was order disorder phase transition coupled with torsion in tri n butyl ammonium trichloroacetate. This is actually the compound which is the tri n butyl ammonium trichloroacetate tabat. It is actually a very simple salt which is formed by the hydrothermal method. In this hydrothermal method the author synthesized this compound by mixing the tributyl amine with trichloroacetic acid. They mix both of the reactants uh, in a beaker and then heated the beaker for three hours uh, at about 50 degrees Celsius and with constant stirring. After getting homogeneous and transparent solution of these two reactants named tri and butyl amine as well as trichloroacetic acid. The mixture then transferred to the Teflon lined autoclave which is shown here. This mixture of solution is transferred to the Teflon and this Teflon is subsequently inserted in the uh, stainless steel container and uh, then it is sealed properly and then put into the uh, heating oven at about 120 degrees Celsius for 7 days. After 7 days of uh, slow cooling process, uh, the authors received very nice needle shaped crystals uh, of this tri and butyl ammonium trichloroacetate. So what would be the benefit of these materials uh, in chemistry? To understand the concept behind their applications and the importance of this material, it is therefore uh, subjected to the different characterizing techniques and it is moreover uh, subjected to the single crystal diffractometer to study the exact structure of the compound that would be helpful for us to find out the mechanism and the properties behind this compound. For example, this is actually the uh, asymmetric unit of this compound in which trichloroacetate is actually make a bond with the ammonium part of the tri and butyl ammonium. So here we can see in the picture C and D and we can even observe the bond distance between the anions as well as cations. So the word order disorder is actually due to the uh, LTP means low temperature phase and HTP means high temperature phase. How would we know this is LTP and HTP because when we subjected this material uh, in a diffraction scanning calorimetry which is named DSC uh, internationally we have observed uh, heat anomalies in the temperature region of 194 to 196 Kelvin. Here in this picture we can clearly observe heat anomalies while heating and cooling at uh, 196 and 194.5 Kelvin subsequently. This heat change is actually the indication of phase transition, solid to solid phase transition. What does it mean? It means that this solid compound is actually transform its solid phase into an other solid phase it means that the both phases are actually solid phases but the structure of the compound is quite different at high temperature phase as well as at low temperature phase and 
what we have observed uh, when we uh, collect the data of their single crystal def, uh, studies at above the phase transition point and below the phase transition point actually above the phase transition point would be treated as high temperature phase while below the phase transition point would be treated as below uh, a low temperature phase LTP so when we collected the crystal data of same crystal at different temperatures named high temperature and low temperature we observed that below phase transition point which is low temperature phase all the oxygen the red one uh, is the oxygen molecule while the black one is the carbon while the green one is the chlorine the black uh, the green one are actually all the atoms are actually in ordered state so when it jumps from low temperature phase to high temperature phase the chlorine molecules are actually highly disordered and occupies two positions simultaneously so the single crystal diffractometer actually describe that this molecule is highly disordered and this is actually the mechanism behind this phase transition and this mechanism is uh, depicted and picturized by the help of uh, variable temperature single crystal diffractometer but the confirmation and the exploration of this phase transition is actually done by using a thermal technique which is the diffraction scanning calorimetry and in picture b we can see that this is actually the different heating rates it is actually 2 kelvin per minute this uh, blue one is actually 5 kelvin per minute and the uh, uh, this actually dark color is of 10 kelvin per minute so different heating rates may shift the uh, position of uh, peaks to some extent but but it should be observed at the same temperature premises this was all about this compound now let's let's talk about the another example the, the paper was triethyl ammonium picrate an above room temperature phase transition material to switch quadratic non-linear optical properties this molecule uh, is actually compound is prepared by also using hydrothermal treatment in which triethyl ammonium amine is actually mixed with picric acid so after uh, mixing both of the reactants in uh, beaker uh, then after getting the transparent solution the transparent solution is then transferred into the for the hydrothermal treatment into an autoclave so this autoclave is also placed for three to four days uh, at about 100 degrees celsius and uh, after that we will uh, we will able to get the uh, nice yellow colored crystals of this compound triethyl ammonium picrate so after getting this uh, nice crystals it is therefore uh, important to explore is there any kind of uh, phase transition in this molecule is present or not then we just subjected this molecule in diffraction scanning calorimetry as we can see that there is a clear uh, peaks of diffraction scanning calorimetry at about 320 kelvin as well as in cooling process at about 312 kelvin it is about near room temperature so we can set this is uh, actually about above room temperature so this is uh, the compound which is which is actually explored with the help of the thermal technique which is the diffraction scanning calorimetry but this compound would be helpful 
uh, in uh, many different applications we can study the even quadratic non-linear optical properties of this compound and if the compounds have these kind of properties above room temperature then it would be more important to learn this is actually uh, done by the help of hydrothermal treatment and moreover the more important thing is actually the thermal analysis which is carried out to this material and uh, it would be quite helpful for us to explore the exact phase transition point of this compound thank you very much